Our first guest is an American sex symbol. Yeah. She made the red swimsuit famous on Baywatch and has graced the cover of Playboy magazine 14 times. I've been waiting seven seasons to meet her. Please welcome to our show the iconic Pamela Anderson. You know what? Let's give you some Pam shoes. Put your but shoes these are not on. These are Pam shoes. These are Stella McCartney. So I've got to give her some love too. Okay. Then these put are still vegan. The vegan? Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> so now I'm realizing oh. that it's taken so long for us to meet one another because you know. Uh, well, you're in New York. Well, I'm in New York. Yeah. You're in LA. Mm -hmm. You've got your boys. Yes. But also, you have to have something big to promote in order yes. to go on shows. So yeah. it's a big time for you. It's a big time for me. I have so much to promote and so much good things going on. That's what you do after divorce. You do things. Yeah. You do stuff. Well, all your dreams come true. <laughs> I love your shoulder length full bob thing. This is thing. all my hair too. No more extensions. Is it? I love it. Oh, it feels like freedom. A freedom. I mean, that was fun doing the short haircut. Yeah. I, now I know I can do it. Yeah. But that's enough of that. Well. I was we, thinking Gene Seberg. I should have done it when I was in my 20s, you know? like. That's a bit revealing. Well, here's the thing, and we talked about it here on Hot Topics. In three months. I thought that would take three months to grow. It's been a year and something, but now it's back, it's back, it's back. I feel good. You have really healthy hair. It was really hard to have sex with short hair. I would think it'd be easier because nothing gets in the way, if I you like know what I mean. I like things getting in the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Sorry. Um, so, you know, you're the only person that I could think of to be on Playboy's final cover. It's, oh, this yeah. is, it's like a no-brainer. I was so surprised. Why? Well, my, my son told me first. He said, Mom, they're not doing any more nude pictures in, in Playboy. I was like, yeah, right. And then my dad called and was reminiscing about the days with Hef and at the mansion. And I'm saying, what do you mean it's over? I mean, Hef's still OK, right? I was worried. And then uh, the next phone call was from Hef. And he said, I, nobody else. I want you on the cover. And it's, I, was, and I, I understand why they've done this, but it's bittersweet because it was such a lifestyle. I mean, it was, uh, the Playboy Mansion was like my university. Yeah. It was full of intellectuals. I got you know, <laughs> sex. Rock and roll, <laughs> all kind of art, mess. all the important stuff. Um, so, but, <laughs> you know, it's a pivotal time in your life because your boys are now not little goobers. They fully recognize who Pam Anderson is. Yeah. It was funny when they were little. Well, thank oh God, they're so big. Anyway, they're little. Um, they, I remember they came off surf camp and they were coming up. They were six years old or whatever. Surf and they came camp. up and they said, are you Pamela Anderson? <laughs> I said, yeah, and they go, what is that? Like, what, why are these people saying these things? And they were just kind of, you know, at career day, they'd say, mom rescues animals, and my dad's a rock star. So they just thought you were an animal activist? Yes. Your boys had no idea? No, I never, and I still don't really tell them every single thing that I do. do I mean, I'm more concentrated Google on them. I hope not. <laughs> but, you know, they, they also get it. I mean, they're really, they, they, they're very protective, and they understand that I've used my platform for good things, and so they they went through a few uh, fist fights in high school. Yeah, well. You know, like 13, 14. Kids can be really mean. Yeah. You know, I saw your mom naked. So what? Yeah. <laughs> So is it true that one of them was conceived at the Playboy Mansion? Mm -hmm. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think the red room. Yeah, yeah. Um, you and Tommy's sex tape, my husband and I insist. The, no. I've never seen it, and I will never see we it. We have. I lived it. It was the best one of all time. It was, oh, because on, it was innocent, probably. It was so innocent. No, because we didn't do it to sell it, right. you know, it was stolen. A whole a refrigerator the size of a safe was stolen out of our place and we didn't know because we had it behind a carpeted wall and construction was going on. So we had people like Guccione offer us five million cash and a paper bag to have this. And we said, no, we're not getting involved in this. And so I think we started a weird trend, but we never made a dime off that tape. But and we was, never will take it, it. It's dirty it, money. It was so innocent. Like they started off in the truck, just the two of them. Oh, They're God. driving. Oh, They're, God. Look, no, no, you've never seen it. So I'll tell you what I saw. <laughs> So, Let's show some clips. And they're driving off to a lake house someplace, and it's just the two of them. There's a no boat, handlers. A houseboat. A houseboat. Right, this can't be a, a, we're not doing a commercial for this. No, but day. it was so cute, though. Your what? love, your love was so affectionate. <laughs> now, you divorced Tommy Lee, yeah. and then you married him again. 
I do go. that. You do that a lot. <laughs> you do that a lot, Pam. I have short term memory. I don't know what it is. I forget the bad times. We all do. So how's co-parenting now with him? Oh, it's great. We talk all the time. I mean, he's always mad at me for something, but I mean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> fine because I don't. I can just go. What does this sound like? Click. <laughs> and I don't have to see him. You know, we're actually very good at co-parenting and we're very, you know, strict with our children and we want them to be well educated. And yes. You should see Tommy in some of these university meetings. It's pretty funny to see him insist on all this, you know, education. My kids just look at him sometimes and go, Dad. And he's going fully tatted. Well, yeah, it's fully tatted, uh -huh. fully like wallet chains flying in. Yeah. He's like, you know, it's just, but he does want the best for his kids. He's a good dad. He's, he's, he's pretty good. You know, he's, he, they, they're loved. My kids are loved and that's all kids need. We never, we never see our kids though acting up like in the magazines. We read all the magazines here. The yeah. Inquirer, Life and I Style. Know, I and a lot just listening to you this today. Yes. It's like, wow, you're on it. Yeah, well, but <laughs> it's what I do, and I can tell you, your kids, I've never read a peep about them. Well, I'd never let them go down red carpets. I mean, they, when they were little, it wasn't their choice to be in this industry, and I put them in um, school in Canada for their, um, their high school years so they could see something outside of entertainment, uh -huh. and I really pushed academics. They're very smart, straight-A students. Well, one's a straight-A student. The other one is... <laughs> You know, he's good, he's smart too, but yes. you know, they're in a different way. Yeah, but they've seen the world and now they can make really educated decisions. They interned in Sao Paulo, they interned in with Vivian Westwood in London and you know they've wow. been all over the place and now um, Brandon's taking acting very seriously, taking acting lessons and he really wants to do that and my son will go to university next year, my other son. He's a musician, self taught guitar, self taught piano. I mean they're really talented, gorgeous kids. But I'm you know, I'm pushing all the other stuff because if you're an artist, art will find you. So yes. I say, look at just just get as much stuff in your pockets as you can, as many skills as you can, and so you so you can, you know, survive this world. You yeah, know, we you all need all the to tools know, in your tools. chest possible. If you're wondering about the Canada connections, because you know Pam is from Canada. Yeah, so I was cheating boarding school because I have I have a house just next door. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, would you ever get married again? Of course. Because you're a hopeless romantic. <laughs> I'm a hopeless romantic, and mm. I do believe in you know in um, just you know I love traditional uh -huh. marriage and. Is that no, weird? I don't know. What? <laughs> she like <laughs> she likes. Yeah, tradition. so I pick really good men that are going to supply that for me. Yeah. If you noticed. <laughs> uh, I always think I can break him or something like or you know, something. a stallion, like a what? Like I'm supposed to like you know I don't know what I'm what I'm thinking when I get involved. Yeah. In these. I'm not thinking is what it is. It's the romantic in you. It is, and Nothing I like wrong a with that. bad boy. I like a edgy person. I like intellectual people, like people that are smart, and they're usually a little cuckoo. Cuckoo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, up next, everybody, Pam is going to continue with our talk. We're going to talk about her brand new fashion and makeup line and a whole lot more, so don't go far. <laughs> You're looking at them, yeah, it's okay. No, you know what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, so what did Tommy say? Nothing. Not good, not bad, no, not do it? He not... Just, no, no, no comment. You think he was pissed? No. Okay. No. I'm just sure no he comment. just didn't look at it. Yeah. He has a girlfriend. Well, I am glad that you, um, I'm glad that they're doing the remake of Baywatch. I have a suggestion <laughs> for if you want to be in it. Money. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, they, they made me an offer to come on to it, but it was like for like half of what they would pay me on an episodic thing. And I said, you know, it doesn't, I would love to be a part of it because I think it's so great that it's finally happening. Yes. Um, and it's, it's a compliment that they want me on it so bad, but I've been doing all these other movies, doing a lot of indie films. Yes. I've been working, doing a real character kind of driven roles and I would love to do it. They have some cute ideas, but I mean, the Rock, all these people are doing this. They can, they can. Zac Efron right. and stuff. You know, well, they can, they can, they can offer me something respectable. Were they asking you to put on the red bathing suit? I didn't even know. We didn't get that far. Because I wouldn't do that, Pam. No. All right. Here's yeah. my thought. Okay. What's your thought? Okay. My thought is, don't Olsen twins them. You know, the Olsen twins didn't go on Full House. Yeah, no, reboot. it's not that I don't want to do it. Exactly. I just think that they can I'm glad. help. You know, it's, I think it's, it's, it's about respect. To here's what you do. What? So you're at a luncheonette. And you're sitting at the, at the you know, having a vegan dinner. luncheonette. Yes. Okay. And, and you're sitting and you're having a little something to eat. Okay. And then by by accident, you knock your water over and it falls in the lap of Zac Efron. <laughs> and you don't know he's this there. Is brilliant. You know, you're by yourself, <laughs> oh, right? You're okay. by yourself, minding your own business. Okay. And oops, and it falls. And then the camera's over here, and you turn around, you go, oh, excuse me, and, <laughs> and then turn back around, and that's your cameo. See what I'm saying? Okay. That's it. I mean, that could be good. Like, you don't have to memorize lines. 
But you know, or, or it could be something like I, you know, save the oceans or do something really positive at the end or something, something to do with activism and something to do with that. Okay. Or is that too boring? Well, no, it's not boring, but now you have to go back to the negotiation table. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, I wanna, who knows what's gonna happen. I think they're shooting it now, though. So they are? They are. Th they'll make room for you, though. We'll see, we'll okay. see. You know, it's... So, um, <laughs> do, you know, it's enough pressure for all of us um, approaching 50 or at 50 or just beyond 50, but being a sex symbol, is the pressure like twice as much? I mean, you know, I have such a wild and beautiful mom and great aunts and covered in sparkles and I just think life gets better. <laughs> I mean, it does get better and you just have to embrace it and do what you want to do, like not try and follow any of these trends. I mean, that's why I started this vegan um, cruelty-free makeup line Let's with my friend Alexis. It. Because like bring back the bombshell. Why do we have to all fit into this, you know, you know, whatever, Harper's Bazaar, whatever, I don't, I don't, everyone has this image of what you're supposed to be beautiful. And I just think everyone wants to be sexy. Girls want to be sexy. Yeah. It's part of our power. Yeah. Use it. Yep. Yeah, and it's, you know, I didn't want to ever have my own brand of stuff because I think a lot of celebrities pretend they're designers and I'm not into all that, so they do all the hard work. Right. But I really wanted to have some vegan products available for people. And I know shoes is a big thing. It's hard to find vegan sexy shoes, so mm. I did them with Amelie Prichard. Then the Pammy's boots I did because I made those stupid Ugg boots popular and they killed animals for them and I didn't know. I thought they were being shaved nicely in oh. a hair salon reading magazines. I, I didn't know. I remember when Brandon was born, I used to see you and Brandon running across Malibu and he was a little boy. Your, yeah. your son yeah. with UGG boots. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, look at the little boy with yeah, UGGs. Now I've made them out of electronics, out of TV screens, out of, um, what? You know, it's, they're made out of electronics. And they're made out of recycled TV screens and telephones and uh, cell phones, whatever you want to say. And so, but now they're, they're very luxurious and these are very innovative fabrics. So sometimes it's more expensive to wear vegan fashion because these are innovative fabrics, plastics from the ocean. But I think compassion is in fashion, it's sexy. And you know, I think we have to do something to save the world. So we all have to do our part when we're buying things buy stuff that aren't hurting animals, cutting corners, not for, animals aren't here for entertainment. How many dogs and cats and birds and stuff do you have? I have just two dogs. I have uh, two dogs right now. But oh. I'm usually in a halfway house, so I have, they have them come through. It's come through. I saved like 50 dogs and 30 cats last year, and I Perfect. Um, adopted them all out. Where do we get the, where do we get the shoe wear and where do we get the makeup? Well, the shoes is pammyslife.com. I keep on doing sustainable products there. And then Alexis Vogel, she's right here. She's, um, uh, it's on her website, Alexis Vogel. It's a bombshell kit. And then um, Amelie Pichard, you can buy my cool Beyonce wore my shoes in her last video. Fantastic. That's big. I saw her after that and I said, thank you for wearing my shoes. And she goes, I did? So it wasn't even because it was vegan. She liked them because they were cool. They so were sexy and cool. Se so it wasn't even about me. Well, it's really nice to finally meet you. Thank you. I really appreciate you bringing me out here. I don't really ask nice. this a lot, but I'm fanning out. So when we go to break, I do want you to sign my Playboy. Okay. <laughs> and uh, for more information on Pam's shoe line and makeup line, go to wendyshow.com.